Hey, what up guys and gals, Jesse here from Long Lost Robots. You know, it's been a long week for me. I've been working seven days straight. Uh, I work in the grocery business. It's actually a very physical job where I work. I will not mention it. Uh, I make pretty good money. I work hard for my money. I've been doing it a long time, 13 years with this company. And why am I talking about that? It's because, well, working hard, you know, comes with reward, good money. And I make good money. And my wife, my wife makes good money. We're certainly not rich and we're certainly not broke. But guys, what I can tell you is that the OPXY, the OPXY is out. It came out a few days ago. Today is the 20th of November, uh, 2024. And this thing has a price tag of $2,300. Now, you know that I am a proponent of capitalism. I will always be pro-capitalist. And if you work and make great money, and this is something for you, and you want to spend $2,300, and you have the money for it, it's a product for you, and God bless you. Um, but we do need to talk about the price tag. We, I am going to show you what you can get for $2,300 to put this all in perspective. We're going to check out Ricky Tinez's video. He is the best. Um, Ricky Tinez is a you know, YouTuber. He's awesome. We're going to start right here. Um, let's go ahead. It's been a long night for me. It's like 8 o'clock at night, but I got to shoot this video. I want to have some fun. Let's look at Ricky Tinez. He's the best. He has fun. He, he makes great music. Um, he knows how to talk. He knows how to use these products very quickly. I know they receive these products weeks ahead of uh, weeks in ahead of time to start to learn the product before they make these videos and are allowed to um, put these videos out because they make a deal with these companies to go over the product behind the scenes and then on release day they can put the videos out. So let's go over Ricky, Ricky Tinius. I got a beer with me. Let's have some fun. We're gonna not. We're not gonna start right in the beginning of his video because I want to skip all his talking, but let's go over Ricky Tinez. You should subscribe to him, and while you're doing that, you should like and subscribe to me as well. It's the only way a small channel like mine can grow. Let's check it out. If we look at our brain, it's moving here. It's going to start moving into a scale of 16. So this here, it's just changed everything up to a C, and then it changes it back down. Okay, so I want to pause it right here really quick. First things first is the XY. It does look beautiful. It looks really cool. It reminds me of like Darth Vader or something, right? It reminds me like something out of Star Wars. And as you can tell, I'm a big Star Wars fan. So let's start with that. It does look really cool. To a G. And then you can hear those little punching effects there, right? Back to G. So this track stemmed from a challenge I gave myself, which was to make a song where everything was a one bar pattern. And it began here on this bass line. Check this out. So already you can- Now, in this video and in some other videos that I've seen of Ricky uh, using this machine, it's quite obvious that there's a lot of menu diving. Uh, the buttons do multiple things. And I can tell you as a songwriter, from someone who's trying to write songs, not beats, Having one button do multiple things and having to shift or function or go into a menu can really uh, adhere the songwriting process. Uh, let's get forward a little bit. Um, I want to see what he, where he's going with and how kind of hard it is for him to keep this beat going or how, how much menu diving he has to do or function and shift and all that stuff just to continue the song. But then came the drums, which are these here this like sloppy kick, sloppy hat, and then a fast hat, and then my voice yo, 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 randomly. And then I added this like big chord thing here, which is going super slow because I took our... Now, really quick, I want to also talk about how when you look at the OPXY, just even on this close-up right here, there's a lot of pictures on there, which is great. I, I'm a pictures guy, you know what I mean? It, it, that's fine and dandy, but when you're looking at it, it really does look like a, a lot to look at at one time. You know, it's, things aren't broken down. Uh, it seems like there's a lot to look at. Scale and scaled it down to eight, so. And the chord is just this, it's a G minor. So I thought that that was cool, and then I was like. Sounds beautiful, sounds great. All right, let's try messing around with these players. I've now figured out what the hell Maestro does. So on track six, I took one of my favorite presets, the guitar. Now, I want to stop it right there. If you could kind of just listen or you know, hear what's happening when he's pressing those buttons, 
it sounds like he's pressing one of these, just a basic keyboard. And that's not impressing me very much. It doesn't feel like a tactile pad, like anything from the MPC line. Um, it just doesn't seem like it's very functional for songwriting, in my opinion. The way it's playing is Maestro. I finally figured out what Maestro does because we have the manual. Well, and, and that's fine. That's a great point. We have the manual. I understand that. But if, you're, if the product that you need requires you to read a manual for two or three weeks for you to start making music, my friends, those are tough products. Those are niche products that basically gearheads and nerds made for themselves and for the people who can learn how to use them quickly and really get the full benefit of using the machine. Like he said, I just found out what Maestro can do. Well, you shouldn't have to find out what anything does if it's a simple thing to use. In my opinion, the MPC line is very simple to use. What it's doing is it's gonna play a chord that you put in. So in this case, I can just say that note uh, here, and then it's gonna lock that in. And I choose at what speed it plays. Up, down. You hear the clicks in his video, the clicking? It sounds like just clicking the keyboard. I don't want to press anything and anything happened on my computer. I got Logic Pro in the back, but let's continue going for a couple more seconds and we're gonna go over a couple of things that I have ready to go. Or there's random. But I really like the up and down because it kind of, again, took this one bar pattern and emphasized it almost into two bars, which of course resulted in this. So then I was like, all right, this is cool. This is just this repeating droning noise. What's the, what's the like B section, right? And this is where I always struggle a lot because I don't know chord progressions that much. I know you can or do a little bit. Here it comes. A little beat repeat of this. And then this happens one out of every two because you could put the components on even these. And it's, uh, if I hold this down, it's gonna be this one here, so. So, really quickly guys, go check out Ricky, subscribe to him. I think he's the best, you know, Loop Hop and Bo Beats are great. Uh, Ricky's just really cool down to earth. Sounds like, he looks like somebody I could just hang out with. I'm from San Diego, California. Um, this thing doesn't look very functional to me. It doesn't look like an instrument. It doesn't look like anything that I would want to make music on. Obviously, I'm a hardware guy, but I'm also an MPC guy, which is basically a DAW in a box. But it doesn't function like your most basic DAW does. It functions in sections. And even when you go into their, uh, their kind of song mode, it's still in sections. Even when you go into their full DAW mode where you can see the whole song from start to finish and you can see it, everything is in sections. When you record, it's in sections or you can record through the whole thing. But when you when you see the new uh, 3.0 or 3.4 beta that they have just updated the MPC with, it's a DAW, yes, but on the other hand, it's not a DAW. It's its own thing that works very much like a DAW and I use it to control hardware. Now, let's go look at something that I wanna show you we're gonna be on the Sweetwater website and I want you guys to check out what I have in my cart. Now this is obviously beginner gear in some ways, but in some ways this could be intermediate gear if you're on a budget. And let's say you've had experience and a lot of your stuff is you know, crash, you, gotta need, you, need, you need a new computer or an interface and you don't have a lot of money. Let's look at what's going on here on Sweetwater. I have this in my cart. The first thing I have is a full bundle. I have the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 fourth generation recording bundle. These are new products. The bugs have all been worked out on these products now. I have the 2i, uh, the 18i20. Um, it works great. It's a fine product. There's, there's nothing wrong with the 18i20. It works great. And it's a third generation as well. So this bundle is at $2.99 with a mic with headphones. And I will, I promise you, this microphone will give you the results that you want in any professional recording. Nobody cares. If you can sing and you can and you get a little bit of experience with how to use a condenser microphone, this microphone will do the, a professional job. And no one will ever tell the difference as long as they are liking the song, they don't care. And if you can get a professional sound out of this cheap microphone, which you can, it will do the job. Now, that's at 299. 
Next thing up, if you need even the monitors, you don't even have to have these. Here's your Yamaha. There's $300 for a little five inches. In a small bedroom, this will help you get that reference that you might need that the headphones aren't gonna get you because you really don't wanna be mixing on headphones, right guys? Let's go a little bit further down. You can even start getting a piece of hardware. This is the Behringer Crave Analog Synthesizer. Is This thing is a beast. I wish I would have almost bought this over my Model D, but at that point, I mean, I, I, the Model D had, is basically your main entry level synthesizer that you can use to really start understanding oscillators, LFOs, the filters, and it's just a great way, in my opinion, to understand how synthesizers work. So for $169, Behringer has dropped the price on many of their products right now. Guys, we can go down. Let's say, let's say you want something even a little better than the One Voice Model D. Eight Voice Behringer Pro 800 polyphonic analog synthesizer for only $339. The reason why I haven't invested in this yet is because I wanted to simplify my, my, my workflow. I got the Selena instead. I wanted to get kind of like one trick ponies that I don't have to be a genius to know how to use and spend hours to form a sound. I wanted to get my sounds simply put, ready to go, dial a couple of knobs in, and there you go, right? That's just the way I want to work. I want my workflow to be fast. Now, on top of all of that, here is your MIDI controller, which comes with, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the bundle software, and uh, it's called Analog, Analog Lab. And the Analog Lab from uh, this here, Key uh, Key Lab Essentials MK349. It's a 49 key controller. That's actually what I want to replace my controller with. I might get uh, even the better one. It's uh, it's their um, Pro. So like the Key Lab Pro, I believe. The Essentials bundle is like only a couple hundred bucks. 219 for a 49 key controller with uh, uh, Analog Lab that gives you hundreds of just awesome sounds ready to go. And I actually use my hardware to start the songs out and then when I when I bring it into Logic, when I bring everything into Logic, I actually use a lot of software to start putting the finishing touches on to accompany the hardware. And it allows me to work very fast. I don't have to start design, sound designing on hardware. If I do need to go there, I will. But I have found when I need little bells, whistles, uh, just to break out some software and then finish the song off and move on. At least that's the way I'm learning to record right now in my life. Now, let's go to the total really quick, $1,300.26. We're not finished yet. Over here on the other tab, because it is not available to purchase, I couldn't put it in my cart, here's the cherry on top. Apple Mac Mini, M4 chip, 10 core CPU, 256 gigs, which is not a big deal because you can just go get your own external hard drive, $599. And my friends, when you put this the other price at 13 it's $2,000. $2,000. For $300 more, you get the OPXY. Now, why am I talking about this? If I don't care, if you make great money, why am I talking about this? Because I think there are a, there are a lot of companies out there that have all fallen and been bought out because they are making overpriced products that the majority of people cannot use and there are probably not enough professional musicians to buy these products. Moog was just bought out, or Moog, I believe earlier this year of 2024. Yes, around February of 2024, I believe. In Music is buying all of these failed companies out. And there's one of them that's thriving right now, is Behringer, because they are specializing in cheap and expensive gear. Yes, it is built cheap and yes, it is inexpensive. Some of it is built very well but they is built overseas, they bring it here, they sell it cheap, and they're selling lots of products. They're making more products. Lynn drum machines coming, more synthesizers are coming, and Behringer is king. Now, notice I don't have all just Behringer stuff in my cart here. I don't. There's a couple of hardware synthesizers, but look at your Yamahas. I'm not gonna put Behringer on there. I'm not, I don't use Behringer interfaces. I have a, a Claret, the first generation Claret uh, series. It's a Thunderbolt series, the very first generation. I've had this thing for seven years now. It works great, if not more. I have the uh, 18i20 third generation. It's a great interface. For $600, you get uh, eight inputs. I mean, so guys, 
really what I wanted to do is just talk about how the OP the OP is overpriced. I mean, look at it. Look at this. This makes look at this headline. OPXY worth the price. Huge discovery. Is it worth the price though? What's the possibility that you are going to make a full song, throw it into your DAW track by track, and then you're going to be able to start manipulating it there and turn it into a full song? You have to work really hard, really hard. I want to go. Um, I want to go into the comments here because I was doing that a little earlier. <laughs> look, at, look at this. The OPXY just blew my mind because it's so expensive. Okay, <laughs> Gentr if gentrification uh, was a synth, <laughs> my friends. The, the, the audience knows. The audience knows. You know what I mean? Look at this. Look at this one. Hope it blows, hope it blows more than just your mind for that price. <laughs> I think we all know what that means. Guys, the audience is speaking right here. And these are all fans of Ricky, just like I am. I mean, and, and Ricky's going to make this thing shine. I know the Midlife Synthesis um, is doing a video too. And he's got like $2,300 in his thumbnail. And he's like, but I ain't even mad. My friends, we're not mad either. We're just not going to buy it. <laughs> Who is this for? And it looks like it's just for like this niche audience of people that love everything Teenage Engineering does. And if that's you, cool. If you got the money, cool. But if you're somebody starting out and you're watching this video, my friends, look what you can get. It's in my cart. $2,300 more. I can go get another, the new Mac Mini for the price of the OPXY. And there's no reason for that. In my opinion, that OPXY, to, to me, is $1,200. $1,200, $1,500 max. But you throw another $700 or $800 on it, plus tax. Don't forget that. Plus tax. The, the, what I had in my cart, including the Mac Mini, was $2,000 was $2, plus tax. That'll get you around the $2,300 range. So, <laughs> so uh Let's see if we can, let's see if there's any more other yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Ricky, 2,300 bucks has to blow my mind more than this. Uh, yeah, um, and here's another comment. I'll do one more. Absolutely blew my mind because t teenage, engineering, uh, t teenage Engineering gave me one for free. All right, so I'm not going to bust Ricky's chops. He's got a job to do just like I am here right now. Uh, but I am not going to buy gear to review it. Um, you know, awesome guys like Ricky can go ahead and review it and I'll give you my take on it. But my friends, look, let's be honest with ourselves. I think it's just a cool toy that's way overpriced. It might look cool. It might be, you know, it might have a great battery of life, which I, I heard it does. I saw some of the specs on it from, from another video. You can take it anywhere, have fun, make cool beats. But I encourage everybody to get away from beat making. Yes, that is what I said. And start writing songs, start recording songs. And that way you get that experience of just real writing, real buildups, real ebb and flow that music needs, not just beat making. Beat making has ebb and flow. Please don't twist my words, but I promise you, if you focus on songwriting, full, complete songs, start to finish, your skills will improve far faster than beat making and just throwing random sounds together that do sound cool and that's fine. If it sounds cool, like cool, hell yeah, that's that's what we want. But I think we need to take a step back and look at these niche audiences or niche creators or businesses that like Teenage Engineering that have overpriced toys that in my opinion look like they can fall apart that don't look much different than this to be honest. And this is not what I make music on. I use this to press play and to do a couple of commands on my computer. I don't use this to make music. I don't use my magic mouse pad for music. I use the MPC one. I even even for my heart my software plugins, I use a piece of hardware, the Softube Console One, hidden right under here. I use it because it gives me the tactile feeling of being able to turn knobs, hear the differences, hear the changes, and then at some point, yeah, maybe look up and see what's going on. But that's the problem today. So many of us are focused on looking at the screen and not hearing what's going on. Now, if you want to hear my music and my productions, I got a lot of different productions from many different stages in my life, all from Long Lost Robots on all major platforms. You can go check it out. Before you do that, like, subscribe. It's the only way to help a channel like mine out, and I appreciate it so much. So in the end, is this for me? No, it's not. 
If it's for you, cool. I hope you get it. I hope you enjoy. But for the rest of you out there, I want you to understand now that these are just gimmicks in my opinion. Um, hopefully teenage engineering can be in business for the 10, 20, 30, 40 years making really cool looking products that are, I imagine are pretty fun to use. They're fun to use. And hopefully they don't get bought out by in music like every other company out there right now. Being conglomerated into these massive companies because they didn't listen to the customer out there. They're incapable of going, let's just make a $500 synth that is very powerful and inexpensive, even if it's still made here in America or, let's say, in a European nation that doesn't have to be made in China. But if you're not going to do that, Moog or Moog or whoever you are, you are going to go by the wayside. You will get bought out. You know, it's just like the inexpensive guitar pedals and synth pedals that are out there. These companies come and go these days because they're not sustainable. It's, you cannot have a company of 20 people and charge $500 for a pedal that's just not worth $500 for one pedal that has an awesome reverb sound. I know it sounds great. It might sound amazing, but that $500 price model is not going to last very long. And there's so much more that you can get that is cheap and expensive and will work. And I want to bring up a couple other points really quick. There are professional pieces out there that you need to take on stage that need to be road ready. And they have to be able to withstand the road. And I get that. And that's where if you're a professional, you need to spend more money on something professional, something that's going to be on the road. But if you're in a small studio, in a, in a bedroom studio, or in your man cave, and you need some hardwares, my friends, it's all out there for us, inexpensive gear. And you can get high quality instruments. I would put the JU06A from Roland on stage all day long. That's a quality piece. You put that in a quality case, carry it around, put it on stage, it's going to perform for you. It's nothing's nothing's going to happen. It will perform for you. The DeepMind 12 will perform for you. There's nothing wrong with these synthesizers. I got mine for $600, 12 voices. You're not going to get that anywhere else. Now, what, would I take a Model D on stage with me across country? Probably not. Probably not. If I did, you would need quality cases to take care of them. You know? So anyways, guys, that's it for me today. OPXY, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Is it for you? Is a $2,300 price tag plus tax too much? Too little? Is it worth it? Are you a teenage engineering bro? Like I'm a Behringer bro, I guess? That's okay. It's fine with me because we are all here. We're all free to explore and buy gear and have fun. But I just hope you're making the best decisions for you and your musical journey and for your wallet. Anyways, take care, guys. I am tired. It's been a long seven days working. And I know for my money, I'm going to make it worth it. And I hope you are making some beautiful music. Take care.